Ernesto is forecast to become a major hurricane. We'll look at where it's going and what it's left behind. Your forecast across the Caribbean and the Bahamas starts right now. This is Meteo Mundo. Hi friends, Rusty back here at Media Mundo. Great to see you on a Wednesday. I hope you're doing well. Coming up, I'll have the newest information on what is now Hurricane Ernesto. We'll look at what's happening at the hour, the forecast track, the potential impacts for our friends in Bermuda, and what Ernesto has left behind. Speaking of that, I want to give a heartfelt thank you to all of those who tuned in to our more than 15 hours of live coverage of Ernesto yesterday as it moved through the Leeward Islands, the U.S. and British Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. Thank you so much for that support. Obviously, our thoughts are with those who have been directly impacted by Ernesto. We're going to deep dive into that coming up in just a minute as well. First thing, though, let's talk about the newest information. We now have Hurricane Ernesto. Winds are 75 miles an hour. Certainly looks a little bit more like a classic minimal Category 1 hurricane, doesn't it? Remember late last night, this huge plume of moisture streamed in from the south, and it really brought significant impacts to Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands late last night and early this morning. And some of those impacts have actually lingered deep into this Wednesday as well. Even at this point in time, we still have some showers and storms, especially over the Dominican Republic. Still some rain over Puerto Rico finally beginning to relax, but it has been a very wet uh, and very windy time in those areas. Newest information from Ernesto. Winds are 75, moving northwest at 16. It is forecast to kind of bobble back and forth, but generally stay on a north to northeast track, slow down a little bit here, but also become a Category 3 major hurricane before it heads towards Bermuda, hopefully weakening a bit as it gets into that area. But there is a hurricane watch now in effect for Bermuda, and the timing of this looks to be late Friday, but especially early on Saturday with direct impacts to the island. So we'll talk more about that coming up as well. Of course, now that we have a new hurricane, we now look at the numbers, and Ornesto is the third hurricane of the 2024 Atlantic hurricane season. Five named storms, three hurricanes, and of course, Beryl was a major hurricane. Now, before we get into the forecast, I have to talk more about where we kind of ended the live stream last night and what's been happening ever since. And that has been just a ton of rain and wind, especially for Puerto Rico. When I throw on these flash flood warnings that you're going to see, there was a time that the entire island basically was under flash flood warnings earlier today. There were some areas of Puerto Rico that had 10 inches of rain already at 9 a.m. this morning. So to get deep into the double digit rainfall totals is likely in some of these areas to go along with there's been some very healthy wind gusts as well. But the flooding has been a big problem. We have had fast river rises. We've had inundation of low lying areas and just too much water and too short of amount of time in general. And the winds have been a big story as well. Just a couple of reports here. Chiba County, Roosevelt Road, a 74 mile an hour wind gust. Culebra County, Isla Culebrita Light, an 86 mile an hour wind gust. Esperanza 58, Vieques 49. So there's been some wind damage. There's been utility issues here as well, not just power, but other utilities. So our thoughts are with our friends in Puerto Rico. If you live in this area, drop in the comments section below. Let us know how you're doing. Things have not been much better for the U.S. and British Virgin Islands. Of course, they got the direct impacts from Ernesto late last night, but behind that, that plume of moisture came in and brought even heavier rain and some even stronger winds. So St. Thomas, St. John, uh, down to St. Croix, and then the British Virgin Islands as well. St. Croix got hammered six, eight, 10 inches of rain. Here are some of the wind gusts in some of these areas. Sandy Point, 70 miles per hour. Cruise and Rum Distillery, 59. Buck Island, 79. Charlotte Amelie, 66. Some Maritime Stations, Delray Marina, 64. Two Brothers, 75. Lime Tree Bay and Rupert Rock, 64. Unbelievable winds coming out of Ernesto behind the center of circulation, okay? And of course, before that, earlier on Tuesday, we had some strong winds and some damage out of the Leeward Islands as well, especially places like St. Kitts and Nevis and Sabin St. Eustatius and St. Bart's and St. Martin. And a lot of you sent me pictures and videos 
Let's take a look at some of those right now from yesterday. This is from Shawn Michael and St. Martin. Look at the waves just absolutely hammering the coastline. We could have some double digit surf heights there just slamming across those areas in the buildings beach erosion, just big time coastal issues there. Then Sean sent us this photo. This is obviously of a restaurant and a lot of the wooden infrastructure, unfortunately, is laying in the parking lot. This video is from Hassani Brown in St. Kitts. Look at this tree. It can't hang on to the winds that are Nonesto brought. And look at the direction that it's gonna go, guys. It's a really bad direction for those two trees. Oh, it's just so rough to see. We know the trees were knocked down the power poles, but sometimes objects like cars can be in the way as well. Then our friend Richard Lee in Aguadilla, Puerto Rico, that's on the western side of the island, talked about how he lost some trees, including some plantain trees. This video was still while Ernesto was impacting the island. You can see the gray skies, the squalls coming in. Again, just really heavy rain, power issues from time to time as well in a lot of spots. So appreciate those folks sending me in those pictures and videos. Again, just a sampling of what you guys brought us. You want to send pictures and videos, it's mymediamundo at gmail.com. Also, thank you for finding us across all of our other social media platforms. We've had some nice, healthy growth on Instagram and TikTok. We've had some great growth here, and that's because of you guys. So thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing to Media Mundo. Again, thank you so much for all the donations we had last night during the live stream means a lot. Our new members, the super chats, the super thanks, the super stickers, the PayPal and the Venmo. Thank you guys very, very much for that. Okay, so now let's get into kind of how Ernesto is going to be evolving here. Still, on this later Wednesday, we're finally starting to see the rain fade. There's still a few showers over Puerto Rico, okay, but not enough hopefully to cause more problems. But we know that the river rises can sometimes linger well beyond when we actually had that initial rainfall. We've actually had some really healthy storms in the Dominican Republic, especially towards the Samana Northeast coastlines here on the very tail end of Ernesto. Just really seems like there's been rich south winds pulling in heavy showers and storms. So there could be some even localized flooding in the Dominican Republic for today. We've had more storms for Punta Cana and La Romana in Santo Domingo, a few into Haiti, but mainly on the Dominican Republic side. No real direct impacts expected for the Turks and the Caicos and the Bahamas. We're gonna talk about some swells for these areas and the east coast of the United States. And my friends in the Caribbean and the Bahamas, stick around. I've got your island by island forecast coming up as well. But obviously, I don't think you're going to mind that we're going to deep dive into Ernesto first because we do have to start focusing in on the potential impacts for our friends in Bermuda. So when we look at this track from the Hurricane Center, and I've got the GFS model load up, the first thing I want to mention is, again, it is forecast to become a major Category 3 hurricane with winds of 115 miles an hour. It is also forecasted to slowly lose some strength as it approaches Bermuda, getting to in just a little bit less favorable environment, sea surface temperatures coming down just to the littlest of shear, but it's only gonna be a gradual drop from that intensity. We're not expecting you know, uh, Ernesto to just absolutely fall apart. So my friends in Bermuda need to start preparing for potential hurricane impacts beginning late Friday and then into Saturday. Again, there is a hurricane watch. You notice that that center line in our cone of uncertainty is very close to the island. That is the official forecast for the National Hurricane Center. When I show you the GFS model loading up here, you're going to see it follows very close to this center line. Now the GFS is slightly weaker than the Hurricane Center, bringing more of a high-end Cat 1 or a low-end Cat 2, rather than a, a middle or higher-end Category 2. But the bottom line is there is a fair consensus across the models that Ernesto is going to be getting close to Bermuda here early into the weekend. If there's a better scenario, we try and slide Ernesto slightly farther east keeping Bermuda on the weaker side of the storm. The surface map will show you that we do have this trough moving by. That's why Bermuda is seeing some rain right now. Our range of high pressure is well off to the east. That should allow that envelope for Ernesto to slide right up there, still well away from the Bahamas and the U.S. East Coast, but unfortunately, again, more retract closer to Bermuda. GFS Ensemble members are in fairly good agreement as well. As far as track goes, they're a little bit back and forth on intensity, but all still basically have it remaining a hurricane as it begins to impact Bermuda again 
potentially starting late Friday, but especially during the day on Saturday. The European model is actually even a little bit more robust in some ways here. You can see that on the deterministic fairly strong system getting to Bermuda again that time frame would be as it moves into early on Saturday uh, certainly as a hurricane there as well the interesting thing is on this it does try and keep maybe the core of the winds just to the west that's not great news but it also tries to keep most of the hurricane winds west as well now this would be a strong east wind uh, a lot of uh, water inundation coming along with this but again if I take myself off camera you can see that you know potentially here if it stays as a smaller hurricane and we can shove this either you know far enough east or far enough west we we brush the island with the hurricane conditions rather than the brunt but we're we're shaving things right now and our friends in bermuda need to prepare for hurricane impacts in that area that's why there's a hurricane watch the tropical models of course are running most of it keep it a hurricane as it moves into bermuda and then obviously as it gets into the north atlantic and much cooler waters we should start to see more of a accelerated decrease in uh, intensity now for the bahamas turks and caicos and portions of the united states east coast it's going to be some really big swells coming in with Ernesto. That will actually start tomorrow, and the worst for the Bahamas will mainly be throughout the day tomorrow and into early Friday. So boaters, especially small craft, need to really exercise caution, especially on the Atlantic exposed waters. We could see some swells that get into the double digit range or very, very close. That does include all the Bahamas, the Turks, the Caicos, and there'll be some larger swells riding up the United States Eastern seaboard as well from the uh, east coast of Florida up all the way up through at least the Carolinas with that. So that's what's happening with Ernesto at the hour, friends. And again, Bermuda is going to be the only land mass that's still in play for us here, but a potential direct impact is likely based on this track. I'll have a lot more on that, of course, coming up in tomorrow's video. Let's talk about the rest of the forecast across our area. Obviously, Ernesto has sucked away a lot of the moisture, and things have been a little bit quieter across most of the area for today. I'm going to bring on our uh, feels like temperatures because that has been a story, and then we'll look at your island by island rainfall forecast as well, my friends. Uh, we'll start off in the Bahamas. Uh, again, we've had a few scattered showers that tried to crop up on the far northwest side. It wasn't much today, though. Walker's Key, Freeport, Abaco, Bimini, uh, Andros, a brief shower uh, here and there. Nothing extremely significant. I'll bring the lightning data back on, and you'll see there's a couple of strikes, but most of that activity pulled away from the northwest Bahamas fairly quickly. It's been basically dry for the central and the southeast sides. And again, even the Turks and Caicos, the moisture from Ernesto is just off towards your east, so besides getting some wave action, you haven't really had more than a brief shower or storm. It's actually been quiet in the eastern sides of Cuba, a few storms on the western side. It's been quiet for the Cayman Islands and Jamaica for today. Not a lot of rain, if anything at all. Feels like temperatures from our friends in Kingston, pushing 110 Fahrenheit, that's 43 degrees Celsius. If I show you guys the water vapor imagery, you'll get the idea that the reds here are the drier air and Ernesto's like a magnet and it's sucking in all the moisture and carrying it with it. So there is a little bit of drier entrainment here on the western sides. If there's been any feed of moisture, it's been back over Hispaniola and into central sides of the uh, Caribbean here, but we have had some healthy showers and storms for today for the Yucatan and portions of Central America, especially the western sides of the Yucatan. Few storms developing near Cancun. We've had a couple of showers in Belize for today, mainly inland, but you can see places like San Ignacio and Belize City, those temperatures drop as the showers and storms have moved in. Shower trying to skirt over Roatan. We've had scattered rain for Nicaragua and Honduras, and then a few more storms this afternoon for places like Costa Rica and Panama. Uh, a noted of a brief shower possible over Bonaire and the ABC Islands, but relatively speaking, it's been dry there for today. And then the Lesser Antilles have dried out behind Ernesto. Completely dry, no. We've had a few scattered showers develop. St. Vincent and the Grenadines caught some of that. Martinique had a brief shower. And actually in the far southeast end of Ernesto, we still even had this little finger of moisture come in and provide a few showers, some breezy conditions. You can see some of the temperatures drop from 108 in Anguilla for a feels like temperature back into the 80s with a few showers. Montserrat, Dominica all caught a little bit of rain as well, but not much. So let's look at, again, the GFS model over the next several days. And if you haven't had the opportunity to hit the like button, I appreciate it. First thing I'll note is 
We're always monitoring, of course, tropical waves in the mid and uh, the Atlantic main development region this time of the year. We'll watch the next one. The Hurricane Center is not highlighting any area as of yet. And we do have a weaker wave that'll be moving through the Lesser Antilles on Friday. That will allow more rain to come in, but for a brief time, this is a fast moving wave. So we'll kind of see a little bit of a maximum on Friday in the Lesser Antilles and especially into the Windward Islands. We're gonna dry out the next couple of days for the Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico, which of course is great news. It always stinks because some of the absolute best weather you see in the summer is the day or two behind a storm, but obviously your mind is in those places, all the cleanup efforts and all the things going on there. And eventually we'll get a little bit more rain into the Northwest Caribbean, but even places like Jamaica and the Cayman Islands are gonna be relatively dry in the next couple of days. Would expect a few more showers to move into the Northwest and Central Bahamas as we get into tomorrow and Friday. Rain chances will be a little bit higher. Some of that rain actually moving in from the North, but again, Ernesto's gonna drag a lot of that moisture away. So there's gonna be relatively limited chances. And even for our friends in Central America and the Yucatan, rain chances will actually fall a little bit from where we've been. Still some of the highest rain chances, but overall just not as widespread as what we've had. So the island by island rain chance looks like this. For the Northwest Bahamas, 30% chance tomorrow, slightly higher on Friday, 30% chance on Saturday. Not a lot of rain at all expected for the central and southeast sides of the islands and the Turks and the Caicos. Still gonna see some localized storms in Cuba, the Cayman Islands could catch a brief rogue shower, but don't expect it to be a lot through the early part of the weekend. Belize City, a 30% chance tomorrow, 40 on Friday, Saturday. Cancun and Cozumel, mainly dry. Jamaica's rain chance is only a 30% chance, and you guys know how hot it's been. Those feels like numbers will be well into that 105, 110 plus Fahrenheit range. The Dominican Republic will dry out even though it's been wet today, not a lot of rain for there, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. and British Virgin Islands through Friday, but rain chances will improve for the weekend. For Bermuda, obviously the weather just continues to go downhill. You know, we had some rain today, decent chance tomorrow, then very high, of course, approaches Friday and Saturday. Anguilla, St. Kitts and Nevis, just a few spotty showers through Saturday. Same thing for Antigua and Barbuda. You'll see a little bit more of a maximum overall, especially starting from Dominica South as that next tropical wave enters the picture on Friday. So a little bit better chance on Friday compared to Thursday or Saturday in most areas. We're around 30 to 50% in most spots. Barbados will have a maximum on Friday as well. Grenada is a 40% chance to, uh, tomorrow, Friday, 30 on Saturday. Our friends in Trinidad and Tobago kind of stay at right around that 40% uh, range. A little bit better chance for Suriname and Guyana. Nueva Esparta will catch a few showers and then dry out for the weekend. And our friends in the ABC Islands, the best chance we've got is just a rogue shower. So again, Ernesto, category one hurricane, winds of 75 miles an hour, forecast to become a category three, but hopefully at least beginning a weakening trend as it moves into Bermuda, where we now have a hurricane watch. So our friends in Bermuda need to stay vigilant with this storm. Our thoughts are with everyone who has already been impacted by Ernesto and those who are still in harm's way. Friends, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for liking this. Thank you for subscribing. Of course, I'll keep you updated. And I've got all the latest across the Caribbean and the Bahamas and Ernesto for you tomorrow right here at Media Mundo.